Um, I'd like to welcome everyone um, who's just come from the stage closing plenary to the Grupo Energia Bogota's technical breakout session. We have Juan Jacobo Rodriguez, who has been a, uh, an active panelist already today and is now, um, well, actually to introduce him properly, is the direct, Director de Planeación Transmisión for the Grupo Energia Bogota. And he'll be giving a, a presentation today. And I would encourage everyone to put your questions in the chat because we will try to leave a little bit of time for Juan to answer your questions directly once the presentation is done. So on that note, Juan, over to you. Thank you very much to all participants. Thank you to the group of Colombia to invite us for telling you what is the role of transmission that we will continue for the uh, energy transition. I would like to move ahead in my presentation and try to get some minutes at the end for Q&A. Now, I would like to tell you who is the Grupo Energia Bogota or Bogota Group Energy. And it has the presence in the uh, electric power and gas uh, projects for the, all these uh, countries, Guatemala, Brazil, Colombia, and Peru. And all these uh, companies are controlled in Guatemala and Brazil. And in Colombia and Peru, we have the presence of non-controlled companies. We still uh, have some challenges With this infrastructure quality, we have in operation 1,600 kilometers of line. And for all the products that we have devoted for setting in operation, and for 2023, we have the challenge of having more than 4,000 kilometers in operation across the country. Now, uh, in further detail and telling you about these challenges for the planning of expansion of the general system, we can see clearly how are we going from conventional resources and generation plants that are built uh, or that were built some decades in six to eight years for a hydraulic project, for instance, and it was enough time for develop the transmission infrastructure that would allow the connection of that plant. However, today one of the main challenges is that those uh, generation projects from these renewable or non-conventional energy are plants that will still have uh, periods for its construction that are smaller, and that makes that transmission system should be developed faster so we can obtain the different benefits of being incorporated in the system. What we have uh, seen in the generation is uh, for these transmission challenges, this has been more complex. And we need to see that there are uh, more um, demands and the participation of the community and also we need to start thinking about these different rights on making this process more complex so the transmission lines are not being developed or distributed uh, in different periods. For instance, we can see that they are taking uh, even higher than five years to to be set. So we are trying to make a balance between the offer of energy, the demand, and the transmission lines that would allow them to make the different connections. However, there are some opportunities there for the system, and that is to incorporate these new and clean energies to obtain the different benefits of decarbonizing and incorporating cleaner energies and to make this energy mix in a more robust way with different other resources. So is how this uh, energy or the uh, entity that is responsible in Colombia to get this uh, 
interconnecting system to be a link for with this uh, wind energy option and with a sun energy that we have 18 one that has been involved with these mechanisms however there are different concepts and uh, we have also seen many others for the plants that have already been described and they have already got this approval concept and we have on the 22 percent that is representing 4.6 gigawatts that makes that the grid need to prepare themselves to receive these other new generation projects coming to the system and then to warranty the distribution however this planning is not as easy as it seems because the variability for these new energy sources are setting different challenges this variability of the sources need to be more homogeneous with other cogenerations so we can guarantee the demand attention. We need to see how all these technologies related to storage are also playing an essential role in all these sources along with demand. Here we have all the challenges that we would like to show and 75% of the capacity that has been requested are not still getting a well-defined connection. And this is for oh, the market we have seen more uncertainty and for the development of the projects. What happens currently when there are some other projects that are asking for a connection point however they are not ensured that this project is going to be developed so we have to save a certain capacity for the transmission so when there are more other projects and when we try to make a balance so we would see the ones that have more certain need to come in to those that have already been assessed by the promoter and sometimes is not in the proper conditions for developing the project. So that sets us, so that gives us an uncertainty to the grid and giving us a different challenges with the definition of what should be the optimal expansion of the system. Also, there is another issue associated to the impact of the connection of these uh, renewable energies, and we would see how there are some other solutions could be taken that could be productive and the different services that could be offered for that technology how you can start making an impact in the different systems and in general to allow the interconnection of these renewable uh, energies so the renewable energies and to uh, meet the demand then we have all this time so the periods that are required for the development of the projects in a more distributed capacity and in the lesser time. Another important feature is that with all these renewable sources are outside of the infrastructure of the grid. In the case of Colombia, we can see the potential and this is at the north of the country, so there is no infrastructure whatsoever for the transmission so we can bring that energy to the consumption point. So this is an additional uh, challenge because they are done at the higher scale and they de demand for the development of infrastructure to get the connection. That will be very important when we talk about energy transition. It's to be talking beyond the wind farms and large projects. We don't have the backbone of uh, the backbone is the transmission lines for all this type of projects. So the challenges within that, well, according to the bids issued in Colombia, we have established a scheme to guarantee demand. However, some of the projects that have been developed in a longer time that schedule here you have on the screen the lines for our environment uh, maybe in other countries is different but we wanted to make that different over 30 
kilometers lines that are, are under construction, 13 projects were foreseen for 43 months' time, but in average, all of these projects are running um, on a longer uh, schedule than foreseen. So um, it took 18 months more, and for the short lines that are under construction, we had average time of 35 months, however, it has taken us 16 more months to have an estimate date of the lines that are in service. So in those, we took 18 months more. So a very important differences of what had been forecasted. See, the lesser risk and the lesser uh, delays due to all the different and associated aspects social, such as social. See the projects that are centralized and that definitely the longer the length, more risk involved in affecting the operation time schedule. Yes, we have to undergo through previous consultations that sometimes delay the project. We want to give you an overall on the transmission system in Colombia at present. We have requests for 3,890 MW. Here you have all the technologies on the screen. Around 2,300 are from renewable, non-conventional non renewable energies, accounting for 20% of the current capacity of our system for those 7 gigas. And here you see that those that are being developed and that are waiting to be operating. We see what is being under development. We have over 3,300 kilometers of lines in development, uh, adding those 20 kilometers that also account for a 20 percent of the national transmission system. There is an equivalence between the amount of projects of generation and the increase of lines that we are connected with the percentage of grids that we need to build in the system. Uh, we see the generation. The system can see the benefits of what is coming into the grid to understand it and developing within time according to the conditions that this plant require in order to be connected to the system. We have to highlight that the government and the ministry have been doing all their efforts to improve the conditions for non-conventional renewable energies and there are resolutions and other concepts where we facilitate temporarily the capacity of generation, given the, a gap of time to enter the transmission, obviously validating reliability and security issues required by the system. But yes, there are some steps that have been receiving some uh, flexibility so we can move forward. I wanted to tell you about one of the projects in charge that it's in charge of Grupo um, Energia Bogota 1500 that are located in the north of our country will be connected. We will be developing 470 kilometers of line uh, and developing a new surface collection uh, substation that did not exist, and then 
that will enable us to bring the energy to the interconnected system. That is one of the most important projects, but very important challenges because of previous consultation. This is the previous consultation that's the largest one in the country that added the, uh, to the COVID conditions has been very difficult to undertake. We need to do a in presence, uh, put in place all the biosecurity that is required, and well, environmental issues as uh, also present very important challenges, but social is the most important one associated to this project. One of the main debates that we are facing when we develop this type of infrastructure is the footprint that infrastructure projects leave as a development. Uh, if they're going to be building a road in a territory, or once again, people accept that more willingly than if we present something associated to infrastructure development. And yes, normally there's higher acceptance on traditional energy projects than in this renewable if, but we don't convince uh, communities, it will be very difficult to put in place non-renewable non-conventional renewable energies. So we need to respect their fundamental rights, their right for previous consultation, guaranteeing that all legal and administrative actions taking place in those communities will not stop the projects, but we need to guarantee the respect of their rights, uh, how to solve conflicts. There are different clans, there are different entities, among them there can be disputes, um, because they are under different conditions and sometimes there are conflicts among communities. So the government must be attentive to talk to those communities and satisfy the expectations that the community has on those projects. Security is very important on areas where we develop the grid. If there are no security conditions, we need to minimize the associated impacts. For us, it is key to take that footprint of development where we establish a project. There are many initiatives that have been shared here you see some images on the screen of things that we have developed jointly with them, interactive classrooms, not only at the Guajira region, but also around the country in the different projects. This is very interesting because uh, the Ministry of Education uh, helps us to provide uh, virtual classroom so they can have the benefit of good education for their children and uh, provide them with their books. I think that is one of the great challenges that we have, that the project enables to uh, bring a benefit to the community. Otherwise, it will be very difficult to convince them to accept our projects. And on top, you see how women are knitting. There are additional technologies that we have to incorporate to the degree to have this energy transition in place. The truth of the matter, in addition to the 1,500 MGs that we will have with Connectora project, we have already mapped many other projects. We're talking about a 7 giga project that has been 
requested in order to connect that ta uh, the amount of a project it will be necessary to incorporate new transmission technologies. Uh, alternate uh, networks will alternate current AC cur should be used for this type of generation. This is a case of the HDC that is a high tension transmission of energy projects that have a very important capex where they will depend of at what moment in time the opportunity will arise for all those parks, all those farms that require to generate this amount of GW guarantee the conditions in the system for the transmission, enable this type of technologies that will bring so many benefits. One of those benefits is to have those connections from the potential of the northern of our country, minimizing the impact of other transmission projects across the country. We need to articulate the amount of energy of power in farms to develop them. Both environmental and social issues will be lesser than those related to AC. So the different agents are preparing themselves in capacity to use these technologies. But those are, are very far away. Uh, in that way, those that are, are located far away, we will be able to provide them with clean energy. We need to see the batteries for this type of technology. We have identified applications on the system in order to improve the conditions because of lack of grid. We have made a bid in the northern of the country, in Barranquilla, to solve the lack of grids and the incorporation of renewables to keep that balance and absorb the variability of them we will have many additional service associated to it. Flow control through the lines will be a topic that we have to work on much more. Many technologies will be incorporated as tourists are being carried out on this subject matter. And we have to reduce the difficulties or obstacles for the system and little by little guarantee to profit from the entire uh, transmission system. Muy bien, yo, yo creo que no, no tenemos más preguntas, Emerson. Agradecerte a ti y al equipo de Ser Colombia y a, y a todos los participantes. No, igualmente, Juan, no, muy, muy, muy buena presentación y muchas gracias. Um, well, we, um, we have a 30 minute uh, networking break um, where I'd encourage you all to go to the virtual expo um, and please return to the sessions area for the two sides events from Siemens Gamesa Renewable Energy, one focusing on technology, the other on services. You can choose which one to attend. And um, please also be aware that we have in the expo area, three live presentations, one in the booth of Vortex, the other in Enercon, and the other one uh, by Leosphere and Mech Energy. So um, without further ado, we will close this presentation. Gracias otra vez, Juan. And we'll see you again in the sessions area in half an hour. Gracias, un abrazo. Yeah.